today we are going to analyze an over-the-counter analgesic which is going to be regular Tylenol and what we're going to do is use LXQ which is um, an ion trap mass spec and we're going to use MALDI for a different experiment so we're actually going to cover two experiments but we'll kind of film them separate but we're using the same uh, we're using the same acetaminophen sample stock for both experiments okay so what we did was we took the mass of a tablet a Tylenol tablet we took a third of that just like our instructions say we put it in a vial and to that vial we added two milliliters methanol then we vortexed for one minute now a vortex is something that's going to agitate the solution what this does is it mixes we're supposed to vortex for one minute it what this does is it mixes um, the powder from the tablet and the solvent really well so that any acetaminophen that's in the tablet is extracted out into the solvent. We have to do this four times, okay? But after the first time, what we're going to do is um, put it over a column, let it elute into a 25 milliliter volumetric flask, and then we're going to repeat that process for an additional three times, okay? That will ensure that we have all of our acetaminophen out of the tablet powder in solution over our acidified alumina and into our 25 milliliter volumetric flask. Okay. So that's how that works and it stirs it really well to get all of our acetaminophen out. You have to do that four times to ensure that you've got all of the acetaminophen out of your solid. Now the tablet will still have solid in there. See how the solid floating down? Because anytime you take a tablet, you're not taking just the pure compound. There's caking agents and other things in there, fillers in there with it. Okay. Then what we did was we took a glass pipette so that our solvent doesn't react with any of the plastics in a transfer pipette. We had to take pasture pipette. You've already, where's this? Oh. Then we're going to pull off our methanol without getting the solid and put it on our column for elution. This is our micro column. Filled one third with acidified alumina. If you remember your organic chemistry, this is a form of solid phase extraction because it's going to pull out anything that's basic in there, other fillers, or any, if there's any carbonate or anything that may have come up, it's going to trap it on the column. And our acetaminophen is what's going to come through. See, now our acetaminophen is dripping through into our 25 milliliter volumetric flask. So we'll repeat that three times more and then we'll put five milliliters of just methanol on the column to rinse off any acetaminophen that might be residually left on the column. Then we're going to fill to the bottom of the meniscus that's on the line with methanol and that's going to be our Tylenol stock solution which we've already made up. All right. Now let's go to the mass spec. Oh, we also made up um, our solvents. We've got a one-to-one -one THF methanol solution with a one crystal of sodium chloride in it. And we also made up <coughs> a D3 acetaminophen sample. Um, this is going to be uh, a different isotope, so in mass spec it will show up at a different place. 
So a D3 is going to have three mass units away from our regular acetaminophen because D deuterated deuterium compared to hydrogen is going to have an, uh, an extra mass unit, right? And you've got three of those, all right? So um, this we know the exact amount of. So we can take our areas under the curve and we can determine the amount of acetaminophen that's in our sample that we will then back calculate to see what's in the tablet. All right, we'll see you at the mass spec. Welcome to the instrument suite. We are going to first go through LXQ. This is an ion trap mass spec. And as I go through the instrument, I will talk through what we're doing. Right now we're prepping our sample. So what we need is 50 microliters. So you can see I have 50 microliters selected here. This is our working solution. Anytime you have a volatile solvent, you should pull up, then expel, and pull up again so that your volume is more accurate because what you've done is you filled that tip with vapors of your molecule so you get a more accurate volume. All right. Then we need 50 microliters of our standard working solution, or our standard solution, not working solution at that point. And we're going to do the same thing with a fresh tip. Why do you have to use a fresh tip? You need to tell me that in your report while you're walking through what you do for the instrument. All right, here we have a total of 100 microliters. To this now, we're going to add 900 microliters already selected. Of our one-to-one -one THF methanol solution laced with sodium. Notice I'm pulling up slowly, as you should. So if you, look at this, if you look at the top of my finger, when you plunge that down, it should be smooth. That means your plunger, your pipette's working well. But you have a stop, you have one stop, and then you have another stop, okay? So what you do is you go to the first stop to pull up. You're gonna pull up your solution. Then when you expel, you go to the second stop, and that's going to blow out any residual that's left in your tip. Okay? little proper technique for pipe it. THF is more is volatile as well, so we're going to use that same technique. Now we have our sample. Acetaminophen. Ooh, that flew right out there. We're going to vortex that to make sure that it's mixed well. It sounds funny. I don't know why. Now we're coming to our instrument. What we need to do for our instrument is when we select our needle, our syringe, we're going to come over here to the solvent that we used. The bulk of our solvent was the one-to-one -one THF methanol laced with sodium. So what I'm going to do is pull this up, rinse my syringe, wipe off that, pull it up, expel, wipe off the needle, pull it up, expel, wipe off the needle, and then I'm going to fill it with the solvent. Notice there's a bubble in there we're going to have to get rid of. So how we do that, we invert it, let a little air in, our bubble goes up to the top, and then we're going to let it out slowly until a little bit of our liquid comes out. 
And now our syringe is filled with our solvent. Okay. We need this because we need a blank. We need to make sure that our instrument is clean and doesn't have anything on it that we don't want. All right, since I'm not supposed to use a computer with a glove, I'm going to take this off. Man, I have not wiped down this mouse and keyboard with Lysol yet. Uh-oh. Should I risk coronavirus for my students? <laughs> Are they worth it? Yes. They're worth it. Okay. All right, this is what the main page looks like. Um, let me back up. This was opened. We're not going to save that. I don't know whose it was, but it's not saved now, so they lost whatever they didn't save. Okay, this is what it looks like. We use Excalibur, but we mainly run everything from the tune page. So this is what it looks like. Over here in this column, you'll notice that there's a few red X's and some green checks. If you have a red X, that means something's wrong, so it's not good to run. Right now, we should have those red X's because we're not actively scanning, okay? So what we need to do here is look up here. This is a breakdown, basically, of the instrument. So here we have the electrospray head that's going into our heated ion transfer tube, which goes to the skimmer. And then it has all these lens voltages right here, the blue, th <coughs> the blue th rings right here are lenses, which have a voltage applied to it to help with our mass, the mass units that go through there, that what we want to allow through there or filter out or et cetera. Then it goes through a quadrupole and then an octopole, and the octopole is the ion trap, okay? So an ion trap acts like a bucket, okay? And if you have enough ions going through to fill up your bucket, then it's going to close a gate and analyze that for mass, right? If you don't have enough ions filling up your bucket, then that gate's going to close after it times out. So we're going to set a specific time for that gate to close. So as long as that gate closes before it times out, you're pretty good with the amount of ions that you're filling your bucket with. If you're not, if it times out and that gate closes, then you've got an issue either with your instrument or with your sample prep. And you'll need to troubleshoot from there. Okay, so let's go back here. Um, this is <coughs> LC, this is, Sorry. this is LC control. This is our syringe pump control which is what we're gonna, we're gonna do DLI, which is direct liquid insertion. So we're gonna use our syringe pump here to deliver our analyte. And here is our pause button, here's our tune button. So we're gonna, we're gonna unpause the instrument. We actually want to collect between 150 and 200. Isn't that what it said? We'll check that mass range, but Right now what we want to do is we want to start the scan. So now we can look at the instrument. We can tell it's scanning not only because we have a green arrow, we have the green triangle, we also have a blue scanning light going, telling me that it's scanning. All right. So what we need to do is take our syringe, hook it up. pop it in our syringe pump, then we're going to start our flow. Right now, we are at 100 microliters per minute, which is good because we want to fill our solvent in all that tubing. So right now, this is just residual junk that somebody left on the instrument, and it's at 10 to the third right here. You can see it's 10 to the third. We have an IT of two, which tells me somebody left something on this instrument. It was not left clean, which does not make me happy. Notice over here though, all of our red X's went away and now they're all green checks. If you wanna scroll down to look for the rest, you can see that they're all green checks. And so nowadays, instrumentation has advanced so well 
that a lot of this stuff has self-checks through their program so you can tell when something's wrong with the instrument just by glancing at your status, instrument status and such. And so it's really good to get hands-on. I really wish you guys were here to get hands-on. Um, but you can at least see how it's operated. Hopefully I will be thorough enough in the explanation that it's, it's, it's going to help. Okay, so let's talk about this, what's happening. We have our syringe delivering this solution through here. It goes to a glass capillary column. I don't know if, how well you can see that. It's a tiny glass capillary column that's then going into our ESI head. This ESI head has a needle in it that's got a lot of voltage on it. Okay. Let's see if we can see it. Can you see it in there? Yeah. Uh, can you hold this right here? Yes. All right, so it's got a lot of voltage on it. So that's what basically aspirates your sample. Now, the sample um, should have a slight amount of acid if it doesn't pick up a proton readily. This readily picks up a proton from our solution, so we're good, we're good with this. Um, that's when it goes through the heated capillary and actually into our mass spec for detection. So that window we saw through is right here. Yep. This is the way you. This is what you were looking at. Is you are seeing the sample aspirated right here out of the needle, with a lot of voltage, and I mean a lot of voltage. So right now the voltage that's on the it's got a spray current of 0.46, but a spray voltage of 4.9 kilovolts. not cleaning very well. Our solvent. Who do I need to fuss at? Check the bean. Should we cut it for now? Yeah, I'm going to have to flush the instrument with some other solvents to try to get this junk off there that was left on there. Um, then we will revisit with our solvent. All right, we have kind of narrowed it down to something in our solvent system is contaminated a little bit, and it is causing us some issues with our IT. This is ionization time. This is the gate time for the bucket. So this is the time. So we have this set at um, 10 milliseconds, and so if this reaches 10, then the gate closes, that tells me that there's not enough ions coming through our system to fill our bucket, which would be ideal when you have just your solvent or you're cleaning your system, right? This nearest line tells you the intensity of the most intense peak. And so this is 10 to the third. When your instrument's clean, that should be 10 to the first or lower. So we have something in our solvent that's causing this. Now, this particular instrument will go to, will detect femtomolar quantities. That's why it's important when you're analyzing with mass spectrometry, you need mass spec grade everything in your samples because it will detect to femtomolar quantities. If you have any impurities in there at all, it's going to detect it. All right, so I think we've got something in there doing that. Since we want to monitor between 150 to 200, what we're going to do is we're going to open up, we open up our bubbles, and we're going to go from 150, and we're going to change this to 200. Can you show them where, where that was? And these are our bubbles. When we click that, that opened up that window. Okay? So this is what it looks like between 150 and 200. We still have an NL of 3 here, an IT now of about 3, so this is an impurity that's showing up. What we're going to do is go ahead and run our sample and hope that our analyte is enough to suppress that. All right, so let's stop our pump. Just turn that off.
never put that solvent back in your containers. Once again, femtomolar quantities. This is our sample made with that solvent that we had running through there. We're gonna fill our syringe. Like that's it and we are at 10 to the fourth right here everything else is suppressed over here so now what we need to do is cut our flow down to 10 apply for our analysis all right so what do we need for analysis right now we are in positive ion mode you can tell by this icon right here okay so we're in positive ion mode what we're going to do is we're going to collect a hundred scans oh no you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to, let's pause this. Let's open up our positive acetaminophen tune. So this is actually using the positive acetaminophen tune file that we have. Um, is there another one? It said to look at the acetaminophen. There's negative. We're going to go with positive and then go with negative. Let's turn our flow back on. So our molar mass should be, what's the molar mass of acetaminophen? plus a sodium, because we laced it with sodium. So 151.163 plus 22.9898. 151 plus, 151 point what? 22.9898. No, 151 point what? Oh, 163. 22.999. 9898, yeah. 174.15. 174.15. Okay. We have a peak here at 174 that's jumping around. So what we're going to do is we're going to average this so it settles down a little bit. So we've got 174 right here, which is our regular sample. And then we've got 177 right here, which is three mass units greater. This is our deuterated. All right. So this is our sample. This is our standard spike. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we are going to take a snapshot of this. This needs to go into my file. TSM, okay. This is gonna be acetaminophen. Acet sample for CHE 411 lab. Positive. And the sample, that, that's the file name. Now the sample name, what I'm going to do is copy and paste here. And in my comments, I'm going to put THF methanol laced with sodium 
positive. And I'm going to start. Here you can see our scan numbers changed, and so that's how fast it takes a scan. So our 100 scans are done now. Okay, so we can go straight to view. This is what our profile looks like. This is an NL, this is, I'm sorry, an average of one. This cell you would use if you were using the HPLC and you get your peak. So this is a total ion current. Since our ion current was the same throughout the run, this is fairly flat, okay? Now what we're gonna do with this depressed, we are going to click and drag through our TIC, and now you see it's averaging 100 instead of one. So this is averaging all 100, this is the scan for all 100 of those. That's what the profile looks like. All right. So now we can file, print. We're going to do selected cell only, all on one page. We need two copies. How many copies do we need? How many? Yeah, we need two copies. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and make myself one too. So we have three copies coming out. Close that window. Let's go back to our. We're going to turn this off. Apply. Now we should be finished with um, LXQ. What we do need to know how to do. Oh, once we we got to wash the instrument. So what we're going to do is we're going to take methanol water or methanol THF and then um, acetonitrile and clean our instrument to make sure that this is between 10 to the second, 10 to the third. Ignore that now because it's not running. I'm not, I'm not actively putting a flow through the instrument right now because my syringe pump is off. Um, so now what we need to do is go back to our view and let's see if we can get an integration here. So we would have to integrate, oh, 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 oh. That's not what I wanted. How can I integrate here? Will this integrate? I don't think it does. Huh? I don't think it does. So we're going to have to do the old-fashioned method and um, use the area is equal to the width at half height times the height for your area, for the area under the peak. And go old school. All right, I'll clean the instrument and we'll see you back for our next experiment, which is molding. Bye! So Bobby reminded me that we also need negative ion mode. So what we're going to do is we're going to, I didn't take anything apart, we're just going to start our flow again. We're going to come here and go to negative. And you go. And the what? So that might be, hmm. We don't have a whole lot pulling out. We've got one over here at 153, which looks like something. It should be 153. 153? That should be the deuterated one, right? Yep. Below that is going to be, so 150 should be, so we may need to go back into our bubbles and lower this side a little bit. Nothing's pulling out that looks really great, but we're going to go ahead and collect this data just because we're supposed to have it. So now we're going to do negative, and this is going to be 2. So 
start collecting. And we are almost at 100. Boom, we're there. So now we can view. Our total ion current here does not look as nice as it did with the positive mode, but you can discuss why that is. Let's go ahead and print this. Oh. All right. Now we can go ahead and clean the instrument and I'll see you back for molding.